Hello, I hope you're well. My name is Tai, and I am a shoe artist and owner of Tai Shoe Design. Today I'm going to share with you 10 business tips that will help you run your shoe custom service more efficiently. Following these tips will no doubt alleviate some of the stresses of running a shoe custom business, leaving more time for you to do what you really love, and I am guessing that is creating beautiful footwear. Let's get started. Tip number one, supplies and tools. Do your own research. When it comes to supplies, do your own research. You don't always need the most expensive tools or supplies. Now, I do suggest that you get the best products that you can afford, but just don't fall for the hype. Don't rely on these companies or influencers to make purchasing decisions for you. Test out different products and tools for yourself. If you are a new shoe artist, you may have to use more expensive tools and supplies until you master them. But once you do, venture out and try other products. Here's a quick example. When I started blinging shoes, I used a tool pictured here to pick up rhinestones. This tool runs about $25 to $30. Once I gained more experience, I did some research and found this tool for about $8. Because I mastered my craft, I can now use almost anything to pick up rhinestones. Tip number two, don't overwhelm yourself. What I mean by this is, don't take in more work than you think you could handle. I have watched tons of shoe custom videos. When I see a shoe artist with a lot of customer shoes stacked up waiting to be customized, I often wonder what potential clients are thinking when they see this. I know what I am thinking. The truth is, no one wants to wait for their shoes longer than they have to. And no one wants to feel like a number, especially when it comes to a custom order. Also, you don't want to burn yourself out. You are an artist. Yes, there is a lot of work involved, but this should be fun too. My suggestion is to be upfront and honest with your clients. Let them make the choice of whether to wait or not. Some customers may not mind waiting. Time-sensitive orders, such as wedding clients, may not have that option. My policy has always been first in, first out. I am curious, what goes through your mind when a shoe artist mentions that they are super busy, or you see that they have a lot of shoes waiting to be customized? Would you commission this artist? Leave a comment below. Oh, and I will respond to all comments. Tip number three, don't be afraid to say no. Tip number three kind of ties into tip number two, so I'm not going to spend much time on this one, but don't be afraid to say no. I believe a lot of newer shoe artists struggle with this, but for the sake of your sanity, you will have to say no sometimes. If a potential client is asking you to do a design or create something you are not comfortable with, lowballing you, or you're just too busy, there's nothing wrong with turning down the job. Remember, it's your business. You are in charge. Yes, I turned down my share of business. I don't like it, but it is sometimes necessary. When I have to turn down a job, I let the customer know right away, and they usually respond back with a thank you. Most customers appreciate you being upfront with them. Yes, you will miss out on a bit of money, but you will gain respect as a professional. Tip number four, pricing and shipping cost. Pricing is something I still struggle with sometimes, but it gets easier with experience. Some of the things I consider when I set a price for a custom include materials, labor, shipping and handling, processing fees, and my rate per hour. Another point I would like to address is, know your worth. I see so many shoe artists underprice their work. If you are new to customizing, yes, your prices should be a little lower. As you gain more experience, price your customs accordingly. If you would like to see me make a detailed video on how I price my customs, just leave me a comment. Tip number five, require a deposit or full payment. As I have mentioned, I have watched tons and tons of shoe artists on YouTube. One thing that surprised me is that a lot of shoe artists do not require customers to submit a deposit or full payment before starting a job. If you are one of these artists, I highly suggest that you start doing this as soon as possible. It will alleviate a lot of stress. As for myself, when someone requests a bling custom, I require a deposit in the amount that will cover supplies needed to complete the custom. Also, because bling commissions usually involve high-end designer shoes, these clients must send in their own shoes. When I get a request to customize sneakers, Crocs, or any shoe under $150, I usually purchase the shoes along with the supplies needed and have the customer pay for their entire project up front. 
Tip 6. Rush Orders When I started my shoe custom business, I did offer a rush order service for a premium fee. Soon after, I discontinued this option. The main reason is, I feel it is unfair for a client who has already submitted their payment to be put on the back burner for a rush order. Running a business is stressful enough. Why ask for more? If you think you may want to offer a rush order option, my advice would be to master your craft before doing so. Also, make sure you have very strong time management and organizational skills. Tip number seven, under promise, over deliver. The concept of under promise and over deliver is basically giving your clients more than you initially promised. For example, if you promise to have a pair of custom sneakers delivered in 20 days, but you finished them ahead of schedule, shipped them right away, and your customer received them three days early, you have performed better than promised. What it boils down to is providing customer service that exceeds their expectations. There are lots of ways to exceed your customer's expectations. Get creative. The key is to do it without leaving yourself overworked and or underpaid. Tip number eight, make yourself available. Respond to email, phone calls, and text messages as soon as possible. I usually give myself 24 hours, but I usually respond sooner. Now, I do work pretty late sometimes, so I am tempted to respond to customers when I do, but for the sake of my sanity, my cutoff time is 9 p.m. Tip number nine, get yourself some business cards. I know in this day and age of social media, some may think business cards are a bit outdated, but they will save you a lot of time. For instance, instead of waiting for a potential customer to pull out their phone and put your social media information, website, or phone number, you can just hand them your business card. Honestly, they really do save a lot of time. Tip number 10, work agreement. To ensure both you and your client are on the same page, I suggest that you have your client sign a work agreement. The work agreement does not have to be very long or difficult, but it should include information such as the brand of shoe and size, their deposit and balance due upon completion of the project, paint color requested, and your shipping policies. As I mentioned, you just want to make sure both you and your client are on the same page so there's no unexpected surprises once the project is completed. Well, that does it for this video. I am still a new YouTuber, so I hope you hang in there with me. I am dedicated to making my videos much better. Please consider subscribing, and if any of these tips help you, or if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one.